I heard it when it hit. It was not a good sound. What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and today we want to do some mowing with our new finish mower. And now it may not look new and that's because it is only new to us, it's not brand new. But we bought this used John Deere finish mower and we did a little bit of test cutting with it after we changed the oil in the gearbox and also put new blades on it. All the covers are off of it right now because I just want to make sure it's running well before I put those back on. But one thing I have to do is I have to put in a new grease fitting. When I was unloading it from the trailer when we first bought it, I kind of got on some e uneven ground and it slipped a little. And the bucket actually broke off this grease fitting. But luckily it came right out by taking a little screwdriver and just turning what was left of it out. And now I'm going to put this new one in. And I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about John Deere and proprietary parts because this is the first John Deere piece of equipment that we bought out here at Piney Grove. So like I said, the front of the bucket clipped this off. Luckily, I was able to pull out the remnant and I'm going to go ahead and put in this angled one. It's probably a 5 16 wrench, but I'm going to use vice grips because I don't feel like finding the right wrench right now. And I don't know if this is a good idea to put an angled one because it might catch grass. But it's the first one I grabbed that fit nicely, so I'll lube that up. This is a Frontier brand mower, and I think, and other people may know the history better than me, so leave a comment down below if you do. But I think Frontier is rebranded from Woods Mower, and John Deere brought it up under their umbrella. But John Deere is the only place you can get parts for a Frontier mower, but they're not the direct vendor. So what that means is, I ordered a new caster. This caster is bent real bad, so the mower doesn't track the way it should. So I bought a new caster using the parts diagram online, but unfortunately, this caster is too wide for this tire. So I called up the dealer where I got it from, my local John Deere dealer, and I said, hey, I got the wrong caster here. I don't know why. I ordered it right from the GM3072 parts illustration breakdown. And he said, oh, you ordered the caster for the pneumatic tire, the air tire, which is fatter. Um, you, I have solid rubber tires here. I said, okay, that's fine. We'll just swap it out. He said, I can only do that if it's a genuine John Deere part. Frontier is a vendor supplied part. They don't take returns, not even for let's say a 20% restocking fee. He even went into his computer database and he checked and he said, there hasn't been a single one of these sold in the Southeast region as far back as he can see. And he's only sold one of these for the solid tire. And that was back in 2017. He said, so it's not a real high use item. And we did put the one on order for the solid tire. I just greased this a couple days ago, but I'm planning on doing five acres of mowing today if the rain lets me. So I'm gonna go ahead and grease it again. The reason that I bought this finished mower, number one is I've always wanted one. I like that they do a nice clean cut. And when we're not doing hay out here on our pastures, I want it to look nice and, and have a nice clean cut. And I've been doing a lot of it with a brush hog, which does a decent job but it doesn't leave as good a cut, it doesn't leave as um, low a cut, and it doesn't break up the clippings very well. It windrows kind of long stringy pieces of grass because there's only two blades on a brush hog, so can't really chop it up that good. That's why I wanted to finish mower. I got three blades here, so we have six knives or six ends that are chopping. A flail mower has a whole bunch of hammers on it or knives. I've watched people on YouTube sharpen the knives on a flail mower and it just takes them forever. There's so many knives and if you get a, a nick in, you know, a few of them, you're gonna have a ragged cut. Whereas taking the blades off of this mower, um, you only have to sharpen, like I said, six edges. I bought this used. These things run about $4,000 new. I'll have, well, now that I have two casters, I'll have about $1,600 into it. So leave a comment down below. For large acreage like we have out here, pastures that you wanna keep mowed and clean, what do you use? Do you use a brush hog or a bush hog, whatever you wanna call it, a finish mower or a flail mower? All right, I think I got everything greased. I'm gonna jump on the tractor and mow some until it starts raining on me. You can see where I mowed a little bit the other night with the finish mower, and that's just two days of growth that's already coming up. But it gave a real even cut, and all the clippings are dispersed because it's a rear discharge, and it discharges evenly behind it. If you didn't know what a finish mower, there's no adjusting with a three-point hitch. You just lower it down on the casters, which are set by some spacers, they're preset. And then you just pull it basically, you don't have to adjust your lift arms.
Well, let me show you how this thing's mowing. So this Bahia grass is pretty tall. You can see it's probably up to the top of the tires. And these long stems are tough and stringy. So I've missed a few stems up there. Let me get my hand out of the way so it'll focus because I was going a little too fast. Having a six foot mower as opposed to the five foot brush hog, that extra foot just really makes things go faster. It's only one foot, but I can just feel the difference as I go across there. I just feel like I'm accomplishing more. One thing I really like about it is that it's rear discharge. So it leaves those grass clippings behind instead of wind rowing them like a brush hog does. And I know a flail mower does that as well. But so far, I really like this mower. So I went through some of the tallest grass that we have on our property, and that's this grass right here. And that's because when the pond was built, there's a little like berm here, and then there's a little valley here that holds water. And also some of the good uh, dirt from when the pond was scraped off was put here. So it's just really, really good dirt for growing grass, I guess. This grass is this tall. So let's say three foot tall. It's ready for hay again. We're just not gonna hay it. And that mower, that finished mower, is just chopping it up really, really fine. And because it's rear discharge, it's putting it right behind and not leaving windrows. Now there are a little bit of windrows here because there's so much of it. But for those out there that think that a finished mower won't do tall grass, here's proof it will. Now I am going really slow and I do have a hydrostatic tractor so I can slow down like to a creeping crawl as I get into this thick stuff. But this mower, will do what we need it to do out here at Piney Grove. It smells so good, it's a shame we're wasting this grass. We're not haying again because we don't need the hay and we really don't have the time to do it. We don't have our own equipment and we have to borrow it. But this grass would sure make another batch of good hay. Bella's losing her hiding space. All right, Miss Piney Grove came out here because she's watching Bella who's swimming in the pond. It's the first time she's seen the finished mower. Let's get her thoughts. I think it's doing a great job. I mean, it literally, I get the name finished mower because I thought it'd be the same as a brush hog, but it's actually more finished. So it looks great. It looks amazing. How much thatch was there and that finished mower with three blades was able to yeah, process? That's crazy. I mean, look at that. It's just, that's amazing. Yeah, no, that, that that exceeded my expectation for it, so yay. Yeah, we just weren't sure if it could process this and we can't be out here mowing every week like we need to be, but she wants to do some mowing with her Kubota. Do you remember the model number? Five. I put her on the spot. It's the ZD1011. I call it the 1011, maybe that's what it's called. But call before, Spunky. She's named her zero turn mower Spunky, but it's a 54 inch, 19 horsepower diesel zero turn and uh, she wants to get out here on it. So let me do a few more strips here and then maybe we can get her on her toy machine. Cool. On this pond slope here, I was talking to Tony at Tony's Tractor Adventure, and he said with a finished mower, because it's on casters, it'll tend to pull your tractor down the slope. Because it's on casters, right? And gravity wants to pull you down the slope. But I didn't feel it pulling me at all down here. Now, I didn't go over the edge too much. So for the pond bank, I still got to experiment to see if I can back up, right? Get perpendicular to the pond bank and back up and go forward and just drag the finished mower. Because I'd hate to have to switch to the brush hog 
just for that. Deb has jumped on the zero turn. I actually see a few raindrops coming. She went down the fence line. Let's see where this crazy woman's going. She absolutely loves that machine. She did one path down the fence line here. I was gonna get some close up of her mowing, but I need to get back to what I was doing. Those rains aren't gonna stay in the distance forever. Looks pretty clumpy in person and on camera, but the new grass can grow up through all that. So I don't know how I did it, but I hit something and dented that in a little bit and the blade hit it. So I got to bend that back out. I was going up against the woods line. I'm trying to keep the mower just in grass, not in anything you'd put a brush hog in. And I heard a clunk and that blade hit that side, but I checked and the blade's not bent and I just got to be more careful. They are not as uh, durable as a brush hog. And I know that, but uh, anyway, I just got to bend that out and get back to work. That's all I did, it bent in about a quarter of an inch and that was enough for that blade to hit it. It's just this, I don't know, eighth inch metal along here. I'll definitely be more careful now. There's not a lot of clearance between the end of the blade and that metal. When that got hit, that blade hit right there and cut that. You can see what happened. But it's got clearance. It doesn't have a lot of clearance though. Finish mower may not be durable enough for me. But Deb's over here on the zero turn doing her thing. Looks like she's double cutting it because maybe it didn't cut real good. She's a little nervous because uh, I'm because <laughs> I'm filming her mowing. This bahia grass grows really quick and it's made for hay and we went ahead and did around the house with it as well just because it's a durable grass for this region. But you got to stay on top of it. You got to cut it every week and we just don't have that kind of time. We both get there our own way. This land and apple tree. How different two souls can be. But we both grow from the same sorrow. If we both know we'll be together tomorrow, I can be like a tree. So that's a 40 horsepower tractor. It has no problem swinging that six foot finish mower, even in thick grass. I think the belt will burn or slip before the tractor will run out of power. I will say in the clippings where Deb had wind, wind rode the clippings, it, uh, it slowed down in those. But I'm gonna try and work on this big part of the pasture. We got rain all around us. I'm actually running the tractor above 540. I'm running it at max throttle and that gives me more blade tip speed in this thicker grass. Sorry about the wind noise. As you can probably hear from the rain on the metal roof, we got rained out, but we got a lot done on the front pasture. How much did you get done? I saw you kind of quit behind the house. Did you get all the way done behind the house? Yep, I got all the way done behind the house and on that side of the gravel driveway for the folks, so. So was the, how was the mower? I love that thing. I gotta tell you, she's spunky. I just love her. I think I mentioned that earlier. She loves that thing. Um, she just doesn't think it's work when she's on it. But as far as the finish mower, because that's what this video is about, the finish mower worked great. You don't know about this yet, but I hit a little stump and I bent it a little, but I straightened it out and it works great. Um, I did find in the taller grass, I do, I do max RPMs instead of 540 RPMs. It didn't bog the tractor down ever. I think the belt would slip or burn before the tractor would uh, slow down. So 40 horsepower is plenty of horsepower. That tractor could probably run a seven foot finish mower, but it does a good job. It does a nice clean cut. It um, really disperses the clippings behind the mower really well. But I think what we knew, but was definitely reinforced today, was that we don't mow often enough. 
Oh yeah, it was thick, it's tall. I know people will look at it and go, it's not that tall, but when you're using these products, it, it bogs them down. Yeah, because the, the Zero Turn has three blades just like the finish mower, and uh, Deb was windrowing some of that grass, and when I went over it to disperse it, it actually slowed down the mower. So uh, that, that grass is thick. I don't know what else to say. That's it, that's all we got. <laughs> But that's all we got for today's video, folks. We sure appreciate you watching. Until next time, y'all take care out there. And remember, life's short. Be kind. And tractor hard. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Nope. Well, no, he did not, cut he that did out. not like right. bye-bye. <laughs> so we appreciate you watching. If you would, click that like button. Until next time, y'all take care out there. And remember, life's short. Be kind. And tractor hard. Take care. Take care, y'all.